So we were on ESPN. I guess we were on ESPN three, which might be a streaming service. I'm that's, not even sure. I think that's the streaming it, it, it service. Is, yeah. So, but then, but then we were on the, the deuce. right. We were on the Deuce from two p.m. to four p.m. Eastern yesterday. And it was, we kept showing these flashbacks to previous trade centers yes. throughout the day and mm-hmm. moments like Gino and the llamas. So funny. And Biron hitting Jennifer Hedger with the gun. So yeah. funny. And you doing all the songs, which was so great for that couple of years. So we, right when we went on ESPN at 2 o'clock, the first thing that came out of break, I'm pretty sure, was uh, Gino and the llamas. <laughs> People. So, like, it would look like our tease, which is the opening of the show, and you hear me going, all right, there's something going on in the parking lot, uh, the TSN chopper, piloted by Vic Router, and there's Chino Retta harnessing llamas. You imagine you're, you're just sitting home, you live in southern Alabama, yeah. and you're going, let's see what's on the deuce today, let's see what's going on over on ESPN, too. What the, what the hell is this? Bloody llamas. What the hell? What the hell is this show? Again, these llamas? And this is somehow a trade show? So yeah, it's but you know what? Who cares? If America accepts us, fine. Hey, man. If Imagine the ratings were like through the roof. <laughs> ESPN too. <laughs> they, we, they can't we, explain. We it. get a show. They cancel that Stephen A. Smith show next week, and it's it's us too. <laughs> Just <laughs> going back and forth. Lester playing the music yeah, in the background. So good. <laughs> That'd be good. Uh, anyway, so what else did I want to tell you? Okay, so we were talking about... Uh, you got a clip from that little mockumentary we ran yesterday, stuff. Sitting at the back desk, and I hear him say it. Is there ketchup on that? <laughs> Is there ketchup on that? I'll never forget, you know, heading to the airport with a, a lot of thoughts in my mind, and the one that just stuck out to me was, was there ketchup on that? <laughs> Whose fault was it? Does it really matter? I mean, the whole thing's a mystery. Uh, yeah, good times. So, uh, a few... how do you say ketchup, James? Okay, so the, the, Lester, I showed this to Puffy the other day. Yes, and because Puffy is always very good at feedback, whether you know what he likes, what he doesn't like, because he's a man of the people. Of course. And he says, "I was really disturbed by the fact you can't say ketchup properly. That you say ketchup, because in the Ottawa Valley where I grew up, you say ketchup." That's that's our you accent. Sound like Ed Sheeran saying grass, <laughs> <laughs> grass. <laughs> what the hell is that, Ed Sheeran? <laughs> so uh, he wanted. He's like, you need to change that. It's very distracting. I didn't. I went did. with my. You've, I went catch up all the way. I kept I, I, refreshing Twitter, looking to see people making fun of you. I'm a ca- I say ketchup. Yeah, so I'm gonna catch up with you later. Thanks, ketchup. man. Ketchup, yeah. like ketchup. Ketchup. Oh, so ketchup. I, I said wrong. Ketchup. Yeah. ketchup. You say ketchup. You can ketchup. say ketchup. I know it's wrong because it's catch. Like K E T C H, but yeah. that's an Ottawa Valley thing. Catch up, baby. Valley, yeah. Catch up. So uh, the uh, that was the thing I love about this company. Frankly, is that they'll support us in doing these idiotic things. I mean, that was as stupid as stupid gets, right? Yeah, but it was funny. And these things cost money to get Curtis Lazar. We had to book a camera crew. It yeah. cost twenty five hundred dollars for one clip. <laughs> Forget wow. Curtis Lazar to say to say that. But it was a money clip. Yeah, you think that's you know Curtis Lazar played along, so why the hell not? Um, so <laughs> the, the other thing was Wallace. So we planned on we were also going to fly Wallace in yeah. to Toronto to, just for his clip. Uh, no, an actual interview clip that would air in the piece, but. Because the trades started happening in Ottawa, we couldn't get Wallace in here. Okay. And so I came up with this idea of having Wallace to leave an angry voicemail for O'Neill. So <laughs> I, I texted Wallace, and again, Wallace was the guy that I was about to speak to about the Curtis Lazar trade on the air yeah. when Jeff's mic was left up, and he said, is there ketchup on that? Ketchup on that. And so I said to Wallace, just record, do an angry voicemail about how Jeff... Uh, stole your moment in the limelight. And then, you know, if you want to swear once, we'll beep it out. And he sent about four takes, and they were they were so they were so angry. <laughs> and Josh Scheiman, the great producer of this thing, had to go, hey, Brent, you need to tone it down. Just be a little bit angry. And that's the one we use. But here, here's the outtake of really angry Brent. Jeff, it's Brent. Listen up, burger boy. I'm f- pissed. That was my time on National f- TV and you ruined it. Who the f- do you think you are? I'm gonna f- 
get you. Uh, Wallace, that is fine. You know what, though? It, it just it, To me, it just goes to show, uh, you know, the, number one, the quality of our, our people here in a sense that they're willing to step up and put themselves. I mean, listen, you guys are all professionals. Mm-hmm. Your reputations are very important. And as such, you don't want to be seen as, you know, you want to be taken seriously. But he was like, willing to put himself out there. So, uh, well, I think I you have to him. once in a while, especially yeah. on a day like this, which we've all, Canada's smart. We know it's ludicrous for us to do this. I say yeah. this every year for it to do 10 hours. So if you can't be self-aware as a network to do stuff like that, that what you're doing is, is lunacy, then you can't. So the other thing we did was uh, we wanted to do, you know, you and I have done songs yes. on Trade Deadline for two years. We probably did 20 songs together. Something like that. Right. Something insane. And so uh, the guys, Josh again and, and Matt K, two of our producers, had talked about they wanted to do like a Beastie Boys type song. Uh, about fourth line winger, how how the the fact that we talk about Eric Carlson and big stars all the time, but usually the trades are about fourth line wingers, and we ended up calling up B Rich, who's a hip hop artist from Kingston, who did out for a rip. Just out for a rip, are you? Just out for a rip. Yeah, mm. which is uh, went crazy viral on the internet and basically gave him a career to tour around Canada and playing that song, and then we did the old TSN version of Out for a Rip. So on very short notice, I had one com- we had one conference call uh, between Cade and I and B. Rich and one of B. Rich's buddies who does the music with him. And basically, I just we threw out a bunch of things that happened on the trade deadline and tried to get a vibe for the song. And then he went back for a couple of days and wrote the song and ended up with this. I'd say San Jose is adding some grit. What do you think, Duff? I don't give a sh**. Will they make another move? I don't know. Let's go to Brian Burke. No. What's gonna happen? <laughs> nothing. The boys on their phones and the James is nothing. No. The James is nothing. The boys on their phones and the James is nothing. No. Nothing. No. Nothing. Frig. I kind of feel bad. Yeah. I, so, I was uh, saying the James is nothing all afternoon. Wow, it's, that. it's a catchy tune. You well, got a catch really on? Nothing? <laughs> no, probably not. Because <laughs> last year it was those guys from Letterkenny yeah. calling me Duthers. Yeah. Duthers. And I heard about that for about three months and then yeah. it faded away. I don't know if Duthin will last or not. But I, again, you just, I just think back about when I got into this business and took journalism. And <laughs> the fact that I'd be standing around with these three hip hop guys and. <laughs> They didn't. I don't think there was many shots in there. There might have been one, but I was wearing a leather vest and I had my tie tied around my head. And the funny thing is, uh, Lester, you might know this, but when you're shooting videos, and I guess this is the way for all sort of uh, you know hip hop videos or even yeah. rock videos, is that they to get the super slow mo effect that still goes to the beat. You have to do it. They have to play the song at double time. Yes. And then you have to dance to it at double time. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, where they've set us up in all these lit areas and they say, just dance funky for this particular scene. But you have to dance double time. So, like, super, super fast. What's gonna happen? Nothing. Nothing. The boys on the phones and the chains is jumping. No. The chains is jumping. The boys on the phones and the chains is jumping. So I'm just no. like... <laughs> And I'm still trying to do it to the beat, right? And have some sort of groove. Puffy's a good dancer, so he, he knows I'm trying to... <laughs> and you're at the end, of, like, so the song takes a minute. Yeah. And you are winted, baby. Oh, yeah. Like, you'd, be, you'd be super gassed. You had to do that for uh, Don't Take My Goal Away, too. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's right. That's yeah. the first time we had to yes, do it that yes, way. Yes. And to see O-Dog and Noodles dance at double speed <laughs> is just absolutely legendary. How many well music done. videos do you have out there? Because there's I guess a few it's going to be two now. Right? No, there's more. No, than- actually, sorry. Buck over glass. Buck over glass. Don't out take my goal don't away. Don't take my goal away. Out, out, out for rip. Out for rip. So I guess we have one. four. You're going to get close to where you can almost have like a half hour much music <laughs> special. <laughs> All your music. It's got to be an old much music guy, though. they got to bring like J.D. Roberts back wow. from his news. What is he at? Fox News or something yeah, like that right now? Yeah. Anyway, good times, and we thank everybody for watching Trade Center. We uh, what else did we have? We had the uh, God. We had to fill a lot of time yesterday. We had the uh, the guy who got traded for the bus, Bussy. That Tom, was good. He Tom was, Bussy he was Martin. Funny. On. Yeah, he was funny. The <laughs> quizmaster was very proud because oh, that was his get. It. He loved and it, and he was just. I could hear him. Sometimes I can hear him giggling in the background yeah. with glee. It's funny though. I, I was. Uh, oh God, this is going to sound lame. I was about to say I was at the gym today. I hate when people drop in like gym stories, yeah. mm-hmm. but. Uh, the guy who trains me is a guy named Dave who's a, actually a really good goalie and he was talking about that Bussy Martin guy because he'd watched it yesterday and he told me a story that we didn't know that I'd never heard before of another a minor league player named John Ronan who, who this guy used to train, my buddy Dave, who played for the Flint Generals in the, in the IHL. Now, the IHL originally uh, merged with the AHL. 
And then they tried to start the IHL up again. Yeah. And they had no money. So it was a real iffy league. So this Flint Generals team, I guess, had uh, the owner bailed the last second before the season started. Yeah. So they literally had no, like, no money. Yeah. But it was too late because they had the schedule and everything, so they had to start playing. So they were just trying to survive on a day-to-day basis. And John Ronan was the captain of the team. And his skates were falling apart, I guess. So he went to whoever was running the team, the general manager or whatever, and said, I have to, I get, I got to get new skates at some point. Do we have any money in the budget to get new skates? And uh, I don't know, a week later, he, he, these new skates show up. And he's like, thank you so much for getting me new skates. Like, how much do they cost? And he goes, oh, no, we traded a guy. <laughs> They traded a defenseman to another team, and the other team gave like bought them skates. That was oh, the wow. deal. No oh, word of a lie. Oh, wow. uh, that's the stuff uh, of minor league hockey.